Daniel Berman, and I'm the head of global health at Nesta Challenges. I think the place to start is to um, talk about really the challenge of uh, AMR. Um, and I think it's quite important to, to, to say from the onset that antimicrobial resistance is something that actually needs to be approached by all angles. So for example, putting antibiotics into animal feed uh, needs to stop um, and, and sanitation is important. But the, the, the one part of it that the Longitude Prize is focusing on is rapid diagnostic tests. And basically there's two things that rapid tests can do. They can eliminate unnecessary use of antibiotics and also choose uh, the right uh, antibiotic uh, for each patient. So one that will work that's, uh, that's not resistant um, and one that is uh, fit for purpose for a particular um, pathogen. And in terms of um, the Longitude Prize, what it is and how it works, uh, basically it's a, a challenge prize or an inducement prize. And what prizes do is they focus people on a very precise objective. In this case, developing a rapid test um, that will be fast, accurate, affordable, and point of care. And when I say point of care, what I mean is that it shouldn't be a test that needs to be done in a laboratory, but that it can be done um, by, a, by a physician, by a nurse, by a pharmacist, or even the person themselves. And to make it very concrete, um, what I'm referring to, um, if you go to, um, for example, a GP surgery and you have um, a fever and symptoms, uh, let's say stuffy nose, how do you know whether it's viral or bacterial? And 70% of adults which are presenting um, with those symptoms actually don't need antibiotics. So um, a, a rapid diagnostic test would identify whether you need the antibiotics or not and which one to use. A diagnostic uh, test basically um, helps steer the use of antibiotics. And when we talk about impact, um, I think it's important uh, to keep in mind that the latest data that just came out uh, a few weeks ago from the US um, showed that uh, every 15 minutes, uh, someone is dying of resistant, um, uh, resistant infection. So this is really a critical global um, problem. And what the test would do is it would, instead of somebody taking an antibiotic that maybe doesn't work for them because um, the, the, the pathogen is resistant to that antibiotic, it would help identify uh, that, that antibiotic um, that works. Um, and I think even if, if you take the UK, um, the, some people in the physician community have said, well, urinary tract infections. We get it right about 70% of the time. So, you know, we, we use a syndromic approach. We, we, we look at symptoms and then we immediately prescribe an antibiotic in, in every case. Um, and that, um, on the one hand, 70% sounds like it's, it's, it's a good number, but it's E. coli is the, is, is the pathogen in the vast ma majority of cases. And E. coli is a very dangerous pathogen. So if we're not getting it right for urinary tract inf infections, if, that, um, uh, if, if, if patients uh, in hospital get E. coli, there's more chance that the E. coli is resistant. So what I'm saying is that um, it's, it, these things are interrelated. And so what a diagnostic test um, would do in that situation is it would immediately in real time uh, say whether the patient actually had a urinary tract infection and then um, look at a battery of antibiotics um, and be able to indicate which antibiotic would work. Today it takes 48 hours to get that information through, through culture. So it's just not practical because um, in it, for the patient's good, it is right, right practice today because there is no test to give the antibiotic um, without having information. But we're kind of in the dark in terms of how we're using antibiotics. And so a diagnostic test will allow us to be more precise, which will have a dramatic impact on slowing resistance so that antibiotics will continue to work.
The Longitude Prize actually has stimulated um, people to come into the competition who wouldn't ordinarily have been working on a rapid diagnostic test. And that's one of the beauties of a, of a challenge prize. And uh, there are some really uh, uh, cutting edge technologies uh, that are being used. So there is a company in the UK called Melogic. They're very well known because they uh, invented the home test um, for, for pregnancy. And they uh, are using uh, cutting edge technology uh, which will diagnose and predict sepsis. So sepsis, of course, is severe blood infection that is uh, life-threatening. So what their test does is uh, it uses five biomarkers in the blood and basically very quickly um, by uh, taking a, a blood sample, you can get uh, an answer um, using an algorithm of whether the patient has sepsis or not. And so that's really one that is, uh, will, will, will definitely save uh, lives. Uh, another one is, um, uh, other technologies are micro, microfluidics. Now microfluidics have been around a long time and to explain it simply, it, it can be used on the size of a credit card and on the credit card it almost looks like a map. And the test is actually done um, uh, in, in, on a very small space, which means you, you use very little um, reagents, and so it's affordable. And actually, it's almost like a commodity. Um, the, the tests would be printed like circuit boards, and so they would be very affordable. Uh, and that one is for uh, urinary tract infections. Um, and other technologies that um, we have are basically taking um, photos or videos and comparing them against a, a database. So one of them is uh, for strep, uh, strep throat. So because that's a case where it's really hard to know whether it's a viral or a bacterial infection. And so by taking this photo within um, a few minutes, you have a result and you know exactly whether it's a bacterial infection or not. As you can imagine, um, since we're, we're trying to be objective, it's difficult, but let me mention uh, a couple. So um, one is uh, a, a company called Lumos. Uh, it's based in uh, the US, and basically their test um, looks at whether an infection is viral or bacterial, but it's a very cool test. It's similar to the um, HIV test in the sense that it's very easy to use. Um, uh, it's not designed to be used in a lab. Um, and the whole test is a single use test and it works by giving a, a finger prick. Um, and so just a drop of blood um, and the device collects that, that drop. Uh, and within uh, 20 minutes, you know whether it's viral or bacterial uh, infection. So within the NHS, um, we, we don't envision that this type of test would be used for all patients because that would be too expensive. But the Longitude Prize and Nesta is working very closely with NHS and we're looking at um, getting these tests um, once they, um, they, they, they come to market being uh, actually piloted in a NHS um, right away. So a test like that would be very uh, useful. Um, uh, another one is a company in Sweden uh, called uh, Astrego. And Astrego is using uh, microfluidics to, for urinary tract infections to see whether antibiotics are susceptible or not. Uh, and so that is a case where um, instead of today uh, just arbitrarily giving antibiotics to the huge number of mostly women who present at GP surgeries, uh, imagine if um, that, that, um, that test pans out and we can, within a few minutes, uh, tell uh, people which antibiotic will work rather than randomly. Because today, for urinary tract infections, every woman is given the same first-line antibiotic and it's not really um, good medicine. Thank you.